welcome to Hello Nigeria. Today is Friday, officially TGIF, so now you can let your hair down and turn up, but right after the show. Now, today on the show, we're going to be looking at some highlights. Doc Bessie says he is not the launderer of $2.1 billion and that Dasuki is. We'll be looking into the details of this story shortly when we touch on highlights. Now, in addition to that, we're also going to be looking at myth or fact. You already know the drill with myth or fact. We help you debunk, you know, already pre-existing myths and we help you to reinforce not things that you actually might know or might have forgotten. Now today we are asking, can't people with tattoos donate blood? We'll be looking at this on myth or fact. Hello Nigeria continues, but please go, go on a short break and when we come back the show starts in full swing. Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now we've had a fantastic day ahead and this is just the perfect way indeed to wrap up your day. Now we're asking some very pertinent questions to start off the show. What, which is the most symbolic element of culture, clothes or food? Well, I'll say it's a mix of both. So there are certain outfits that you just have on and you just totally know that this outfit is either Western or it's African or there are certain things, you know, our food as well. We have certain things that are unique to us. And for example, when you look at this picture, without a shadow of doubt, you would know automatically that this is an African-inspired look. So yes, our culture is, our food is our clothing, but beyond our food and our clothing, our culture goes into our, our traditions, our norms, our customs, the way of life that we've embraced over time. Now, some of these customs, however, are things that we should push behind us. They're things that we should let go of because some of them are harmful practices. Customs like child marriage, customs like female genital mutilation, customs like widow disinheritance. Several other of these customs should be put away. And even though they form the part of our culture and tradition over time, it's time for us to finally let go of them. But if they were to ask you about your culture, about your tradition, about your people, what makes you fundamentally Nigerian? Is it your clothing? Is it your food? Think about that when we go and check out today's myth or fact. Now, today's myth or fact is about tattoos. Can people with tattoos donate blood? Yes or no? Find out after this break. Now you know that people with tattoos can donate blood, but the tattoo the donor has to give it 12 months after donating the blood. And I'm sure the reason for this, I would think that the reason for this is because tattoos are usually done using needles and all. So they need to ensure that, because before you donate blood, the blood is being screened and the blood is being cleared and fit for use. So they need to be sure that that 12 months constitute enough window period for them to have for any negativity or any infection or disease to pop up within that time. So it's important that um, these, while you get your tattoo done, make sure that your, your needles are sterile and that the ink has never been used before. Now that's all that we have for you on today's Myth or Fact. We'll go on a very quick break. When we come back, it'll be time for highlights. Please don't go away.
Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Now it's time for us to look at highlights of today. We're going, of course, to the political scene to see all that has been happening. Now, a while ago, we spoke about the Dasuki Gate and the arms scandal. And not only did he rob Dasuki in, but several other people as well were drawn into this chaos. Now, the caption of today is, Dasuki is the launderer of 2.1 billion naira, not me, says Raymond Dokwetsi in court. Now, the media mogul chief Raymond Dokwetsi and his Dow Investment and Holdings Company Limited told the Federal High Court in Abuja on Friday today that they are not the launderer of the 2.1 billion naira as alleged in their ongoing trial. But the former National Security Advisor Colonel Sambo Dasuki, who paid the funds to them in 2014. They spoke through their lawyer, Chief Kanu Agabi, SAN, while arguing that there are no case submission which they filed after the EFCC closed case against them with the 14th prosecution witness on May 28, 2018. The FCC had charged Dokbasi and Dow Investment with money laundering and procurement fraud involving the 2.1 billion naira, which they allegedly received from the Office of the National Security Advisor between January and March 2015. Dokbasi and Dow Investment, the parent company of AIT and Raypower FM, were also said to have received the sum of 2.1 billion naira from NSA office while being headed by Colonel Sambo Dasuki as payment for a quote-unquote purported contract on presidential media initiative. The prosecution alleged that Dokbasi and his firm received the sum from UNSA to prosecute the People's Democratic Party 2015's presidential media campaign. The prosecution also alleged that the payment was in breach of the provisions of the Public Procurement Act, Money Laundering Prohibition Act, and the EFCC Establishment Act. But arguing his clients no, no case submission on Friday, Agabi urged the judge, Justice John Soho, to dismiss the case and discharge the client. Of course, Justice Soho has fixed the 12th of November for the ruling in this matter. We're we'll bringing you the updates on how this plays out. I think this is very important. This sort of conversation is important, most especially because we are preparing for 2018 elections, 2019 elections, I beg your pardon, around the corner. So there'll be more cases of bribery, corruption, allegedly, alleged corruption. So at the end of the day, people need to be careful and to be on the lookout because election will go beyond 2019. After the elections, we'll start to see the Pandora's box opening and a lot of things that were done in hidden will be brought to the light. And lots of people, I'm sure at the time, if this is something that the court finds to be guilty, at the time when a lot of these actions are being committed, we find that these people don't realize that anybody is going to find out. But we can't make any predictions on this. Of of course, um, we wait for the courts because it's a matter in court, it's a matter pending determination in court. And when the court gives a ruling by the 12th of November, we'll be here to let you know what the details are. Now, moving over to our next story, PDP submits our key's name to INEC as its senatorial candidate for Quara Central. Now, the national leadership of the People's Democratic Party has sent the name of the president of the Senate, Senate Bukola Saraki, to the Independent National Electoral Commission as a senatorial candidate. The name of Saraki was among the list of candidates submitted to the commission in Abuja on Thursday night. Saraki, who represents Kwara Central District in the Senate, was among 13 of the senators whose names 13 presidential aspirants, I beg your pardon, of the party. He came third at the party's convention, which held in Port Harcourt River State, and the PDP had held the senatorial primaries before that of the presidential primary. While Saraki paid for the PDP nomination and expression of interest forms, it was, however, not clear if he paid for that of the Senate as well. Investigations showed that Saraki's name was used to replace the name of one Okwe, who was initially filed as the PDP candidate for the senatorial district. It had been initially being speculated that the former governor of Kwara State was among the suspected presidential aspirants in the party who had another plan since they knew they could lose the PDP presidential nomination. I was learned that Saraki is being positioned to return as the president of the Senate in 2019 by the PDP if former Vice President Atiku Abubakar wins the presidential election. Now, a source said, and I quote, Bukola Saraki's name is there in the list. He's returning to the Senate 
on the platform of the PDP. But of course, all these are speculations. We don't know exactly what the case is with regards to Atiku. Of course, we don't know if Atiku would win the elections. And we don't know if um, Bukola Saraki, of course, would um, eventually become the Senate president again. But what all this kind of boils down to at the end of the day is the fact that a lot of us find it very difficult to let go of power. Now, this is not Saraki's first taste in government, as of course he's been governor of Kwara State, and more recently he's been the presidential, he's been the Senate president, and also contested to be a presidential aspirant on the part, flag party bearer for the PDP, which of course did not turn out in his favor. So at the end of the day, it does seem like, okay, since A is not working, plan B, remain in power. And some people say absolute power corrupts, and absolute power corrupts, absolutely. What do you say? Of course, we'll be bringing you any updates on these stories here on Hello Nigeria every weekday at 7.30 p.m. But of course, it's time for my first big break. Now, my first big break is a, is a segment we bring to you to let you know of your favorite celebrities and most inspiring people and the first shot they had at making a difference in doing what exactly they do now. Our first big break candidate or our first big break guest for today is none other than the really inspiring Nike of Nike Arts Gallery. Now her stories have gone far and wide beyond the shores of Nigeria into other countries with the amazing work she's done with our art in Nigeria and putting us on the map globally. Today she shares with us her journey and her first big break. We hope you enjoy. When we come back, our guests will be with us in the studio. Please don't go away. This is Hello Nigeria and thank you for watching. I started at the age of six when I lost my mother and my grandmother. And the only way they pass education to kids in those days, parents will teach you what they are doing. And by the time you are getting to 10, you are already becoming a professional. So I will say the death of my mother actually made me focus on the art. But when I finish primary six, I don't have money to go to secondary school. I just see that in the school, I always take first position on the art. I said, let me focus on this textile and see where it's going to carry me to. That is how I started doing the textile. I value the textile first because the closest thing to your skin is your textile. And people say, a niño la saw me. And it's the textile that gives me the fame of today. Even though uh, all the lecturing I have been doing all over the world is on textile. The pattern, the meaning, and what, how they transform the textile to send a message to the community, to the government, to the people, to, the, to your friend. So those patterns of fabric, I went deep into it and I went to study with some of the older women who are still doing the textile. And that is why I am more friendly with the textile. Even though I do painting, people don't know me as a painter, they know me more of a textile. Well, a lot of the people, they don't know what art do. Art is life, and life is art. Art can make you live longer. Art is like therapy. I know two family were coming here and they were fighting themselves before they get here. So when they enter, the fight just went off. They say, oh, look at this. Oh, this look like so, so, so. Oh, what are they doing? So then art is for healing. It's also for the society to, to calm down. 
instead of all this pressure, I want to become a melonier, I want to become this, I want to, when you see art and you sit down, it relaxes you. And that is why a lot of the young people are not slumming to die in the party like before. Before all what they think is to drink, eat, and go. But now they are using art to ease the, the, the pressure down. So art is doing a lot in the community. An art is for healing, an art is like therapy. I got my big break in 1974 when they took 10 African artists and no single woman. So the American government said, if there is no female among all these artists, I want to recommend one. By then, they have already started selling my work in the craft uh, shop at the Museum of Natural History. And my work is selling for $2, $3. So they now went there and recommend my name that they would like this woman to come and teach because they know it's from a fifth generation textile artist. That is how my big break. When going to America, I just say, wow. So this art can carry you, the creativity can carry you to US without being an ambassador, without being the son of a minister or daughter of a minister. Then I said, I'm going to teach my people when I come back. And that is my big break. Well, if they invite me today or they make me an ambassador for art, I will make sure I carry the younger people along because, you know, in do, they don't put the right people in the right places. Like to, uh, during the time of Baba, Obasanjo, he liked me so much, but they put my name in about three ambassadors in Nigeria, Norwegian, US, and the Italian. They put my name that they want this woman to be the minister for art. They said the woman with no education, but the education we have is more than the education that has certificate. Even though we don't have opportunity to get that certificate one, if I can lecture in Harvard, and lecture in all the big, big university in US, Germany, Canada, Italy, all over. So why not our own country? So I will carry the youth along and make sure the people who will also pass the knowledge, training the trainers, that is what I do. I train you, I will ask you to go train the other people so we can carry it up to the highest, highest point. You see the Nolly film, it's not one day, they start small, and then they help themselves. So we also have to let the government help us because we have been helping ourselves all along. But we need the media and the government to also lift us up. So we will be able to, for people to see what we are doing. Well, I want to explain to the youth, and I want to motivate them by focusing on what they know that they know how to do. Just like you, the media, they have been doing a lot to promote our art. We thank you very much. So if you know you are good in cooking and your mama is a good cook and you have a restaurant, just focus on art, food is art. Because you can do your own food, maybe a foriro with a sharo, and make it more artistic, and then your food will be selling more than your mama's own. So that is how I want the youth to see this art like we have carried it to a certain point. We need you people to carry it along and make it work because the future is in the hand of the youth. Uh, you know Nigeria is a giant Africa country and anywhere Nigeria goes all over the world, they always stop people, they will say Africa, but when they see the head tie, they will say Nigeria, Nigeria. So I said my country is the giant Africa country from 54 Africa country. So why don't we do the crown of Nigeria? Make it big and let people know that the women of Nigeria, they are market women, they are also a big woman. In the, each woman is a queen of their husband. And you see, when queen go to a party, he wear his hat. And everybody is looking forward to see the heart of the queen. The same thing I said, let us make a giant, big canopy, hair tie, for people to know that Nigeria is big. Everything, when Nigeria want to do something, they do it good and they do it big. 
So that is what make me started this giant onigeli kekele. Eh yeah, oh good. Then they will always say onigeli lo loko. Mm -hmm. They will say because of my husband, I have wear. There is no hair tie I haven't wear. Just to please my husband. There is mind your own business. There is men follow me. There, so you use the gele to talk. So my professor, my oga, Professor Waleso Yenka now name it Gele Gala. Anytime we wear this gele, we are going to a party. Oh, one So it's now Gele Gala. And ye, yummy, Professor Funipe Adi, Are, Adi, Re, Oni Uruko, Asowa, Ni Nigeria. My name is Nike Devi Sokondaye. I want you people to keep watching. Hello, Nigeria. To enjoy more of this, our Ubunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.